everyone is wondering the crazy details of the absolutely insane negotiation of this KVK that I'm in with 1093, 2605, 1960, and three other war camps that each have four kingdoms. So in this video, I'm going to spill the details of what actually happened in the Diplo chats. And thankfully, because other people have already leaked these chats, I can sequence all of this for you in chronological order, exactly how it went down. And this isn't my word you're taking, but the word of many Many people who reviewed this to confirm that jointly we've prepared an accurate assessment of what the heck actually happened in this Diplo because my god it will make your head spin. It took days to get to this conclusion so let's review it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and Diplo is such a crazy mess. And there's a part of me that thinks it's really fun, and there's a part of me that's like, my God, it's so stressful and weird. And there's all this strange politicking going on by certain entities to make other entities look bad. So in this video, I'm going to do my very best to try to stick to the facts. To do that, I'm going to review a document. I, I hate to do this, but a document in sequential order of what actually happened with pictures from the chats because the chats have already been leaked, which affords me the opportunity to just point to things that have already been shared elsewhere. This includes not only um, the opinions of, you know, 2605, but again, I'm going to be giving a play-by-play -play of the big picture of what happened in this Diplo. And let's just start with why this Diplo is a little bit weird. On this map, you have three Imperium Kingdoms. 1093 and 1960 are very interested in slugging it out. And for the majority of this conversation that I'm about to show you, you will notice that 2605 and the three other war camps all just kind of chill and are, and are for the most part letting 1093 and 1960 sort things out. All right. So we're going to go through all of that. But a part of what I want to convey at the start of this video is that in my opinion, the worst possible outcome from all of this, and it's so obvious, is a free-for-all. Now, a free-for-all I've referred to as always stupid always because a free-for-all puts at odds good gameplay and winning. You see, a great experience makes it so that good gameplay and winning are one and the same. But in a free-for-all, anytime your kingdom fights and another kingdom is not fighting, they are remaining as strong as they are while as you and others are getting weaker. And so if you and others are getting weaker and someone else is relatively staying the same, you are at a disadvantage against those kingdoms. This, by the way, is going to influence dramatically the nature of the Diplo because of which kingdoms could fight which, the positions of all the Imperiums on the map. And before we dive into the step-by-step -step of what happened, just to emphasize that we know that free-for-alls are terrible, you can just look back to other KVKs where this happened. I've been in a free-for-all in the past, but if you want to look at someone else's experience, get a look at the KVK with 1846, Dragothian, Legend Ronnie, and others, where they were in a free-for-all and everybody thought that everybody else was breaking the rules of the free-for-all agreement. Free-for-alls are a complete cluster. They are the worst outcome <laughs> and basically, that's where this is all going to end up. Spoiler alert, but let's get going. Now, like I said, in this video, I'll share pictures of diplomacy so you know I'm not putting words in people's mouths, and many of these pictures were already leaked in public chats. So I'm not sharing any information that is not available in other places. I'm just stringing it together for you in order, all right? Now, the very first thing that happened is everybody in this KVK got together in a Diplo chat, and the first thing that people try to do is gauge the smaller kingdom's willingness to fight. Um, and the consensus, okay, from the smaller kingdoms um, is that they would try to push as hard as they could, but you got to realize like the smaller kingdoms in these, in these smaller camps can't really compete with the big imperiums. And like, totally, 100%. And so 93 takes a moment in the, at this point in the very start of the conversation to point out that there are kingdoms that stay fight, you know, committed, forming a ball, running it back over and over for as long as they can. And at the other end of the spectrum is kingdoms that get demoralized and kind of don't show up for the rest of the KVK. So the question is like, how do we figure out where all these kingdoms sort of sit on the spectrum to try to make a balanced KVK? Um, and at this point, 
my kingdom, 2605, Cortex being one of the representatives here, points out that we'll do whatever the group wants to do, and the best options we've seen are 2v4 or potentially a 3v3. And you can see Cortex's message here. Um, there are a couple issues with that, in my opinion, when a 2v2v2 is pointed out. So um, a 2v2v2 would be one Imperium plus one non-Imperium war camp. And Cortex says, let's say everyone allies their neighbor. That means that 93 allies Daybreak, 960 allies Greenwood, 2605 allies Earth. What I think is likely to happen in that scenario is 2605 and 1960 will have a 1v1 fight until 2605 can't fight anymore, assuming that 1960 will win. Which means that 2605 is out of the KVK and 1960 will already have had a tough fight. So that seems... Um, all good for 960 and for 2605 as we got fights, but from 1093's perspective, that doesn't look very appealing as they will basically have a cleanup job and won't get nearly as many fights as they hope for. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I would see it if I'm 1093. And there's always some funny business with three teams and FFA type stuff that ends up with drama of some kind. So at this point, you know, the, the 2v2v2 option, which people are all saying like, do that, do that, do that. It doesn't make sense, because as Cortex points out, we would fight against 1960, we would go all in, presumably if we lose, we're out of the KVK, 960 is weakened, 1093 cleans it all up, that sucks for 1093, from our perspective, we got to fight, it's kind of fine, but the better options are as follows, a 3v3 with 960, 2605, an Earth Camp, that's the top middle camp, or a 2v4. And at this point, it sounds like the 2v4 being proposed is 1093 plus 2605, with Earth Camp even having safe passage to join their allies, all right? Now, many more options are going to be discussed. This is just the flow of the conversation. Remember, I'm trying to go in chronological order. There will be many more options presented, including a 2v4 where we are allied with 1960, okay? So at this point... All the smaller camps gave their input, but everyone basically kind of agrees that at this point, it's really kind of up to 960 and 1093 to figure out what happens in this KVK. So here's what Cortex says. He says, yeah, so in, I mean, in my opinion, there are a few ways this KVK could go. I know there's been some trash talk between our kingdom and 1960. And to be clear, it's, to my knowledge, completely the other way around. Like 1960, certain members in certain leadership positions were trash talking us. Um, but regardless, I won't let any of that get in the way of making the good KVK we all want. Now, I'm okay on either side of the coin, to be honest. I could see a 2v4 with us in 1093. I could also see a, a 3v3 with 1960 being an option. But I'd also like to hear the thoughts of 960 and 93 as well as the rest of the camps. All right. So the options on the table so far are the 3v3 and the 2v4 with us allied with 1093. Now, at this point, 1093 declares that their objective has always kind of been to fight 1960. Um, and they're not being assholes. They point out that 1093 is on their fifth pop of no match found. So they like really need to hunt for a kingdom like 1960 to get a match. So that's a part of the reason I assume they queued up for this KVK. Um, and if they didn't point this out in the chat, then this is something Cortex pointed out to me that like they're on their fifth pop and they had several no match founds. Um, and one of the smaller camps had brought up the idea of 2v2v2 where each Imperium gets a smaller camp paired with them, but that doesn't work for 1093 because they're not going to get the kind of fight they need. So 1093 declares that if it's 2v4, it should be actually 1960 and 2605 in a 2v4 or a 3v3. And 1093 points out that Free-for-all is also terrible. Now, I have here a note that top versus bot doesn't make sense because 1960 plus 2605 plus another camp is too strong, but that, that comment actually doesn't make sense. So let's just read it from the leader of 1093's exact words here. They said, we signed up planning to fight 1961v1 with 2605 on the map and 1960 totally opposite corner. It makes it a, a, that goal a lot more difficult to balance. 2v2v2 seems boring uh, for us for reasons written by 2605 above. The only other option would be a 1v1v4, but that smells like a free-for-all, which is always a disaster. Top versus bot is totally unacceptable, and I imagine for 1960 as well. 4v2 or 3v3 with 960, 2605 versus 93 
are both very similar in my opinion, since it's relying on how much the smaller camps are willing to commit to keep it balanced. The only 3v3 in this scenario that would be fair is 1960-2605 Earth versus 93 Day Green, so that one side has an Imperium advantage and the other side has a map advantage. And just to show you what she's talking about, what we're talking about in that situation is that 960 and 2605 would have one of these blue zones, but 1093 would have two of the blue zones. So if if they're going to take two of the non-Imperium camps and make it a 3v3, they would have a map advantage, whereas 960, 2605 would have the Imperium advantage. The next thing they point out is that 2v4 with 93, 2605 versus 1960 also depends heavily on how much the smaller camps are willing to commit to make it balanced. Again, trading Imperium for map advantage. It sounds like this is what 1960 prefers from what Mammer, who's from 1960, wrote. So at this point, some number of hours pass, and 1960 wanted to confirm that their only options are what Nyko presented. Then there's even more downtime. Nyko follows up to try to get 1960's input, and at this point, they haven't provided options, and they've been responding to the options provided by others, which is totally fine. That's what 1960's been doing up to this point. And Leopard says they prefer a 1v1, um, but no, that's not really possible. 1093 points out that they can't control the map, and they just need to decide how to play the KVK based on the camps being what they are. They say, well, this is the map we were dealt. We need to deal, you know, with what we got, right? So you can see I'm, I'm not like making this up. Like, this is exactly what they said. Based on additional consideration, 1093 narrows the options for how to ally and provides their logic, all right? So they basically say, we've discussed a lot more about this internally and changed our minds some. Whoever is taking on the small camps is taking the majority of the risk this KVK, and it doesn't make sense to try to make the paper stats balance out in a 3v3 when the unknown factor is big. This is not in any way a criticism of the smaller camps, the reality is that you can kind of predict what bigger camps will do and how they will perform, but it's much harder to predict how the smaller camps will perform. Again, fully not a criticism. Um, so in our opinion, it should be 2v4 or 4v2 with Earth Camp not locked. Cortex says, that sounds completely fine to me. We're down to do a 2v4 with either you or 1960 on our side. And Leopard says, well, we're not fine with 2v4 or 4v2. It's not going to be balanced regardless. So Cortex says, what are you suggesting? Wei, who's from 1960, says 960 plus 2605 plus Earth will be more balanced. If you guys check the map, you can realize the 1093 side map advantage is really big. And Nyko says, sure, we looked at that, but I disagree that it, the advantage is enough considering there's a chance that the smaller camps will all be drained during past six. So we would end up with a 2v1 in Kingsland, all right? So what Nyko is pointing out is that 2605 and 1960 are relatively bottomless. If we drain their allies, like 93 is basically stranded against two Imperiums in, in Kingsland, which is not a situation that they're interested in doing. So 3v3 is off the table from 93's perspective. In fact, I've got this summary here. From 1093's perspective, the only viable options are the two 2v4s. There's a bunch of discussion around the details of how the 2v4s will work at this point. Just to give you a little bit of an illustration of like the conversation that's going on here. Um, Sewell says, smaller camps are really an unknown factor, so we cannot put them all on one side. Either they outperform with the number advantage or end up not showing up after a few hours. 2v4 or uh, 4v2 would be completely a one-sided game most likely ended up becoming two imps versus one imp situation. Um, and Wei says, or the small camps are really underestimated and overperform. And Nyko says, um, just don't come into the zone, not like we can't take the pass, lol. So then Nyko says, you guys played 3v5 last KVK and did a great job draining the five side. You did the same against 365 when we were allies, and 365 was bigger than us then. We're working with only 800 accounts, the same as you. So don't think you can have an unlimited uh, number of farms or something. So really not sure why you would say it's impossible to drain us. Um, and they, they, this is, I think, what she's quoting. Smaller camps are really an unknown factor. We cannot put them all on one side, blah, 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 right? And Wei says, this map is totally different. Strength of the eight is easier to drain. We couldn't drain 2489 in this map mode. 
You guys did drain them, though, Nyko says. They gave up before King's Land even opened. Wei says they gave up because they couldn't protect the pass, not because they were drained. And then Leopard says, let's ask 2605 for alternate suggestions since they're the odd one in this unbalanced KVK. 2v4 or 4v2 for 1960 is not an option. And Cortex says... I already presented various options, and like I said since the beginning, we're open to almost anything. We just want to fight. If it's unbalanced toward us, I don't even care. 1093 presented options, so I'll ask again. Given the KVK we have, what would you like to happen? <laughs> so Cortex basically says, we'll do whatever, all right? So as I said, 1960 has declared that 2v4 is not an option, so Leopard steps up and says, well, how about this? 1093 fights top. 1960 fights bottom, the winner of top and winner of bottom fight again. Um, and so Cortex points out, so you make 93 fight the Imperium, isn't that the whole issue that we're trying to solve right now? Um, so the issue with a situation where you have top duke it out and there's a winner and bottom duke it out and there's a winner, and then one of those winner from each side goes to Kingsland and then fights, is that you you would get a lot more drained. Like 93 would get substantially more drained fighting 2605, a double Imperium fight, than, um, you know, 1960 trying to fight two non-Imperium war camps. That's the concern with a top versus bottom situation. So again, just to benchmark on where we're at, both 26 and 1093 are both aligned on two different ways we could run the KVK. But 1960 is disagreeing because they think that 2v4 is imbalanced no matter how you put that. At this point, things are starting to devolve a little bit, all right? Cortex says, and you know, there's like accusations of who registered first and all this weirdness. It's very weird. Cortex says, we registered before 1093, but okay, regardless, this is the map we have. Nothing can change now. If 1960 um, cannot agree to any scenario, then I guess it will be an FFA mess and you can have your 1v1 in the end. And Leopard says, let me be clear. It's not that we don't agree with any scenario. We don't agree with any unbalanced scenario. But all scenarios are unbalanced, Cortex says. And then Leopard says, anything that is balanced, we will agree without a doubt. Leopard says, exactly. And Crix does a laughy emoji. Cortex says, well. Leopard says, tell me what is balanced. And um, from 2620, OG Gina says, you realize there's nothing balanced about 1960 fighting two small camps on the bottom, right? <laughs> So basically, the small camps are pointing out that uh, the top versus bottom situation doesn't work. And so from here, there's a lot of discussion into the details. Um, Leopard says, please, let's not talk about the power and kill points in non-Imperiums. We all know that um, this KVK, that is not relevant. Um, and Cortex says, well, you just suggested that you fight two non-Imperium camps and 1093 fights us. How is that balanced? And Leopard says, because I don't see any other alternatives that is balance in 1v1 scenario, since you were the one that mentioned you're not worried about balance or not. Um, Cortex says, I just wish the map were different. I don't know why you're not on bottom left, but it is what it is. Cortex says, well, we're used to fighting KVKs. We're not favored to win, hence why we've lost so many KVKs. I mean, hey, look, own it, right? So yeah, I'm less worried about balance and more worried about having a good fight. And Leopard says, around 100 of our members wrote to customer service yesterday and asked them to place us on the bottom left corner, but they declined. Um, and Cortex responds to himself uh, about losing KVKs, and he says, which is why, to be honest, I'm okay with just smashing our heads into you in Zone 5 until we can't fight anymore and be done with it. <laughs> and OG Gina chimes in again and says, can we all agree that any fight at first pass is unbalanced or irrelevant. Daybreak isn't going to go at 93. Earth isn't going to go either direction, and we sure as hell aren't taking on 60. Yes, 1960 and 605 could fight, and we can fight Daybreak, but to what end? So, so far, you can see, like, this is going great, right? Like, it, you can understand now why this is taking days, and no one agrees on what a good situation looks like. But then... 1960 introduces a 1v1 and 3v1 scenario. The winner of each of those fights then fights for the Zig. So this is something I've never seen before. Have you ever heard of a KVK where no kingdoms fight until after past six and completely reorganize themselves? Um, logistically, it will be difficult to manage this 3v1 situation. And let me just show you this map, okay? Here is what then became the focus of the conversation for a long chunk of time, all right? So 1093 and 1960, there, by the way, there will be no fighting at all. 
until 1093 and 1960, enter into this zone over here and fight here. There will be no fighting at all until 2605 fights all three other war camps at the same time. Bro, let me tell you something. Hey, look. Um, we did 1v6 <laughs> in the past. Okay. One alliance versus six kingdoms. Uh, we lost. That just happened. So, like, going one alliance versus 12 kingdoms? There is a difference, however. Like, those were A kingdoms that we fought in the 1v6, and I believe there are not as many, like, strong A kingdoms in this, in this configuration. But the point is that each of these war camps, for the most part, only needs, when we're fighting at different passes, you only need, like, one meta rally leader garrison. Anyways, we don't need to get into the details here. This is the situation that they were talking about, all right? So 960 and 1093 would slug it out, and whoever wins or loses goes home. And we would slug it out with the three other war camps. Whoever loses goes home. And then there's a fight over the Zig, or maybe whoever did wins down there gets first, and then whoever wins up top gets second for Zig rewards. Like, they went on about that conversation for quite a while. Um, but there's there's some problems here. The first is that you can't actually make this 3v1 situation. Camp Greenwood, which is the bottom middle, can't actually get into that top zone until past seven opens. So if we're, in order for Greenwood to do the 3v1 with us, they can't go through this pass and then through this pass. That's like the passes are limited for who can enter them, which is different. This is a Warriors Unbound KVK. So we would have to do this fight only two days before Kingsland, and they would have to come through Pass 7, and they would have to get set up on this Pass 7 literally through the middle of a war zone with 1960 and 1093. So they will have to walk across the war zone to get set up to then have this fight, assuming that that territory isn't somehow in the fight that 960 and 1093 are having, which actually presumably it would be. So like logistically doing this is way trickier than it seems. And 10v3 is not okay with this setup. And they come up with a list of reasons why they think this is not an okay setup. And we'll, we'll get to that list in a minute. So the new suggestion becomes, well, what about a 1v1 v1 v3, which is basically a free for all, but now all the smaller kingdoms are together. Um, and here is Leopard saying, I don't know we don't, uh, why we don't fight from past six. We have to wait 10 more days to fight past seven, and two days later is Kingsland. Nyko says, that's why I said 1v1, v1, v3, not 1v1 and 3v1. Um, like Lily said, I don't think it's realistic to keep both sides of the fight totally separate. Uh, Wei says, it is realistic. And Nyko says, may as well make it fully a four-way. Wei says... 3v3 or 1v1 are the only options for me. Um, the rest, we can talk for days about the problems. And Nyko says, uh, don't see why we have to compromise on literally everything while you complain all is unfair. And Wei says, lol, 3v3 is a fair option for 1093. Also, the 1v1 is what 93 asked for. Now you ask for free, uh, free for all. 1v1, v1, v1, v3. Oh my God, I can't even keep it straight in my head is a free-for-all variant mode. Now, you know my perspective on free-for-all. I think it's the worst thing on the face of the earth. So this back and forth goes on for a while, um, and Nyko says, um, no, it's not. You guys don't think 2v4 is fair with 1093 and 2605 because the three small camps are too weak, but you think we should give up one of those camps to make it a 3v3 if it's 960 plus 2605? Don't understand that logic. So in case it's a little bit difficult to follow along, and you can see why this is a little convoluted, Nyko is saying, well, guys, wait, what the heck is going on here? Like, if you think that 2v4 is not fair for you, um, where you don't think it's okay for you as a big Imperium to have three non-Imperium allies, why would it be fair for us to be a big Imperium with only two non-Imperium allies? Like, if you think that, that, that the 2v4 with... 2605 and 1960 doesn't work because 1093 has three non-Imperium allies. Why would it be fair for us to fight you with two non-Imperium allies and you get another non-Imperium camp? So anyways, um, continuing on here, Papa goes through his list of reasons um, why it is that 1093 isn't interested in the 1v1 and the 3v1 determining the KVK. Okay, so this 
it, I mean, there's all these details. I'm like, I'll go into them. But um, if we go to the bottom zone six, we can get attacked from five camps when pass six opens. 2605 and top middle can attack our top zone six. Meanwhile, 1960 will be attacked by two camps only, the bottom two, because it makes sense for you to ignore the bottom right zone six. Um, but it doesn't make sense for us to go into our top zone six and be attacked, taken back. Um, or do you want us to ignore the top zone six as well? And then he says, if it's you want us to ignore the top zone six as well, well, how would you define this KVK? It's 1v1, v1, v3, right? So 960 and 1093 will have a 1v1 in the bottom, but we don't like the restrictions on flags. Um, if you don't go zone A, B, C, you can see um, 2489, 1484 did that in Orleans KVK. Uh, in the end, they just fought how they wanted instead of how they agreed. So they're basically expressing concern that like in a free for all, it's just going to be chaos. And like, how can we trust we're actually going to get this 1v1 with 1093? Also, Nyko said if we go bottom zone six and whoever blocks past eight could be us or the two smaller camps, you'd have no access to Kingsland. Um, why not? Uh, we have all three circles and have a fight in Kingsland instead of putting bets on risking the passes. This is my personal reason. I don't like doing 1v1 in such a big zone with so many terrains. As you can see from the screenshot, in Warriors Unbound map, we can only build near forts and uh, forts near structures. I'm not going to send all our main alliance forts there with this terrain using uh, up to two free forts being attacked from everywhere, lose the territory flexibility, lose the top zone. Meanwhile, 960 only has to send one alliance as fighting power. So this is a list of reasons why 1093 is not interested in the 1v1 and then uh, 3v1 situation. So as you can see, like this is spiraling. Teams cannot agree. Um, and here, here goes the spiral. Okay, chat, this is where it's going out of control. Um, from 1093, Sheepdog says, I don't know how many times we have to say we're not doing that, which is a 1v1 in the bottom zone six. Way says why. Um, Nyko points to the reason why. Um, paw explanation is not valid, says Way. We were just looking at the paw explanation. Um, so 1093 laughs. Um, which one is not valid? Say it. Um, and then 1093 says, then it's because the sky is blue. <laughs> so, I mean, this is really spinning out of control. Um, you asked why we need flexibility. I answered, don't waste my time. Way says, all parties will not, um, will agree not attack wrong enemies. You don't like it is not a valid reason. Um, this is not a valid reason. Personal reason. So he's, he's like breaking down the four reasons provided by Paw Paw and his thoughts on them. Um, okay. So then Leopard says 1v2. Um, you guys say you want a 1v1, uh, but in a spot that is strategically unbalanced. Paul wrote the reasons, not going to repeat them over and over. So we said 1v1 too, but just waiting a few more days to do it in a different spot. We've all waited for months. What's a few more days to make it balanced? All you've said is that you don't want to wait. Is that your only reason? And Kenny says, may I ask why we need to wait till past seven? You mean you ask other camps not to fight until we meet at past seven? So Nyko points to the reasons why that she had already explained. Kenny says, past seven to Kingsland, only four days. You can just say um, we meet in Kingsland and everyone farm till Kingsland. If 605 fights before past seven, will you say it's not fair that we got trained? Sheepdog says, you're the only ones who from day one have been pushing for a 1v1. We've given four to five other options, and now you expect us to drop everything and do the only one option you want, even though it makes no logical sense. Ren says, I think we both came into this KVK for a 1v1. We've been trying to achieve that goal. You stated that you waited long enough. Why should we wait longer? Um, and Kenny says, uh, in response, no, to make it clear. We also would accept a 3v3, but you guys don't accept it. Leopard says, 1v2, not enough. What else do you want? Yet you're still talking about other options. Sheepdog says, we registered three times, but yeah, we secretly wanted to 1v1, y'all. Ren says, it's too long of a wait. Sheepdog says, so three th verse three is fair. Nyko says, we had to wait. Why can't you? Like, Diplo chat is freaking spiraling, okay? If you're struggling to keep up, I'm struggling to keep up. The people in the chat are struggling to keep up. And then this happens, okay? Leopard says, everyone prepare for a 1v2. 
1960 versus 1093 and 2605. Um, he says 1960 verse 1093, 2605. And Nico quotes this picture, which was not in our Diplo chat, and says, we'll just play solo to try to keep it balanced as we already said. Thanks. Sorry you guys stuck on this map. So, like, there's no agreement between 1093 and 2605 to ally. At no point have we talked about allying other than, like, the 2v4 situation. So, Nyko says, hey, if you're just going to go and say, flip the table, it's free-for-all, then we're also not taking an ally. Um, and so then the other camps are like, so just what about us? What about us? What about the three camps with four kingdoms in, in them? And Nyko says, well, we can't take anyone else if this is how they're choosing to play. We'll offer you guys one-time free passage through our zone to zone six, though if small camps are trying to like all link up. And Crix from 2605 says, hey, same. Like if you guys want to link up, we'll give you passage to link up. And uh, 2460 says, all right, we'll discuss with our camp and see where it goes from here. So let me just summarize what just happened here. So the king of 1960 declaratively states, this is what the Diplo is now. It's done, even though it hadn't been agreed upon. And 93 is like, uh, well, we saw this somewhere else, but okay, I guess we'll go along with it. Um, and by the way, we're not going to take 2605 as an ally. So, like, at, again, at no point did we agree or did 1093 agree to ally up in this context, okay? Um, and the reason is that 1960 is not taking any allies. So it wouldn't be a 2v4 if it's us and 1093 versus all the smaller camps, and also um, 1960. Like, if they're not all allied up, that definitely doesn't make any sense. So, anyways, continuing onward, here is the message from 1093 stating what had happened. He says, uh, they say, hey guys, sorry for the long Diplo wait. This doesn't beat our five-day record, though, <laughs> which is kind of funny. So they've had worse Diplo. They say, our allies this KVK are no one. This will be a 1v1, v1, v3. No agreement was reached and 1960 doing random BS. So we will play solo as well to try to keep it balanced. Um, the details. As you all know, this map is pretty hard to balance with three Imperiums and the remaining camps being mostly B and C seed. The smaller camps were enthusiastic but realistic about the impact they can play on this map, mainly just as support. With that in mind, there's not a lot of options for teams. First, we considered 2v4. 3v3, and 4v2, but ultimately decided that with how small or unknown the three little camps are, it doesn't make sense to split them up. They should stack them all on one team so that hopefully one of them is an overperformer to try to match 2605 on the other team. Neither of these 2v4 or 4v2 are perfectly balanced, but the team with the four would have map advantage, um, two safe zone sixes, to compensate for much weaker allies. 2605 was mostly okay with either. The smaller camps were happy as long as any locked camps would be given free passage out. 960 was not okay with either and wanted to lock, uh, wanted 3v3, 960, 2605 plus Earth. We were not okay with that, so asked them for another suggestion. Theirs was for a 1v1 in the bottom zone 6 for Ziggurat. Loser goes back to zone 4, and we give up our safe zone 6 for 2605 to 1v3 the smaller camps, aka the 2489 special. In our experience, deals like this are never fully honored. Always someone finds some fine print to wiggle around on. Doesn't make sense for us strategically to give up um, the, and this is cut off, but the advantage of their territory. So anyways, all this to say, they've moved in and it's a 1v1, v1, v3. Um, and like, they state their reasons as to why it is in that, configuration um and at this point it's 2 a.m my time chadsky has made an announcement in our discord that this is what it's going to be um Nyko has made their announcement that this is what it's going to be but then 1960 is still in diplo chat trying to walk back leopard's declaration and negotiate and they said just to follow to way's comment most of our negotiators are now sleeping. We need a few hours to have them wake up and continue the talk normally, just like the past two days. We understand the talk is not 100% over. If this is called throwing tantrums or pre-assuming 1093 and 2605 were pre-allied, then this is not true. 
uh, from 1960s perspective. We've discussed many alternatives, which hardly fall into everyone's uh, favor as being unfair. This is why Leo, a few hours ago, brought up the case of one Imperium versus two Imperium. Um, this is another approach that we, in 1960, want to propose and see if it's possible to get another possible deal since. Um, and they say a 1v2 based proposal doesn't mean that we're excluding the involvement of the other three camps as one of our main motivators for pushing 1v1 after 1093's mention was to find a possible way for the three minor camps um, to have a playable KVK. 1v2 just means the 1093 and 2605 side has the upper um, hand of having an Imperium, and the side of 1960 is definitely on the weaker side. As 10, uh, as 1960, we're okay to take the weaker position, and we believe this is an approach that should be discussed on the table. So just to be clear, Leopard has just announced what the allies are, despite the fact that an agreement had not actually been made. So 1093 and 2605 are like, all right, I guess like we have to do 1v1, v1, v3, because otherwise it's definitely imbalanced. Um, and then 1960 and Diplo chats like, hey, we're still negotiating. That's not actually final. And Crix points out, I mean, bro, your king is leaking Diplo chat in public discords. What are y'all doing? Um, and uh, D Lion says, who's leaking? And Crix says, Leopard is leaking. And they're just literally posting the screenshots of of the chat. It says, let me post everything in Diplo chat. So y'all, um, okay, language. All right. So, anyways. Uh, and D-Lion says, darn it, could have at least waited until something was already solid. And Sheepdog says, pretty typical, lol. And Crick says, GG. So D-Lion steps in and says, let's get ready uh, and do what we got to do amongst ourselves and start writing our mails to inform our kingdoms. So these are the three um, camps of four. On my behalf, respect to you all in Fire Camp and Wind Camp. We're at 2605 and Wind. Respect to a few of you guys, not all from Water Camp 1960. Guys, I don't know what y'all's problem, lol, but you guys hung up too much on that 1v1. I expected more out of this Diplo, honestly, but no issue. Plus all that leaking, not even our low A or B seeds do that. In my opinion, all of that should have been kept here if we're trying to find a solution, lol. If anything else changes, uh, we will be aware, but as of now, we're going to write our mail and info on how this KVK is playing out. One, V1, V1, V3, aka free for all, aka always stupid always. Um, and this continues on, by the way. If you think this is the end, you are wrong. This is the next starting point, okay? So at this point, from 2754, Mr. Bunny Boo says, I understand that in this game, there are imperial realms possessing considerable power, a factor that significantly influences their players. However, it's crucial to remember that at its core, this game is about strategy and enjoyment for everyone involved. Every player deserves a chance to have fun. Establishing diplomacy with the right allies is key to creating a game experience that is both enjoyable and balanced, and doing so brings honor to all kings and realms involved. Bro. Oh, man. Preach. Setting aside a large number of players simply because some think they can act as they please is not only disrespectful to the other realms, but also diminishes the honor of their own kingdom. For me, the outcome of winning or losing is secondary. My true enjoyment comes from the thrill of battle as it embodies the unique excitement that this game offers and is what most players seek. Oh my gosh, this guy is slaying. Wei says, that's why we offered a 3v1 for your top side. Other map kingdom had a good experience. It's 1093 who refused, not 1960. Also, the 3v3 option was offered by 1093 and rejected again by 1093. So at least two plans were rejected by them. If you don't see this, then you are manipulated. Um, we don't mind a loss 1v all, but facts are facts. Now remember, this is not 1v all. If you see 1v all anywhere, know that it's wrong. That's not what this is. It's 1v1v1. One, v1, v1, V3. It is not everyone versus 1960. Just to be beyond clear about what is and isn't true. This is not a, four, a 3v1, 4v1, 5v1. It's not, it's not everyone versus 1960. That is literally, in, in the most definitive way, not what this is. Okay? So that is fully not what this is. Um, Loco says, we didn't ask to be in this map, and neither did we expect it. Yet here we are. So this is Loco from uh, 2607. Yet here we are, so I'm willing to give our all and zero our kingdom and flags if that helps the Imperium we ally with. From what I've heard from here, um, the 
other small kingdoms, this goes for them as well. I see everything, and as a small kingdom, I'm letting mostly the Imperiums decide uh, on how to make this as fair as possible. I'm not manipulated. Neither does you rejecting options or 1093 rejecting options bother me. But what does bother me is the disrespect we just got, pretending like we don't exist and after saying 12 kingdoms don't matter at all. So at least let's stay respectful toward each other. We're all kings in this chat with responsibilities for an, an entire kingdom despite our sizes. Well said, brother. Oh my God. Guys, these, these kingdoms, like... Even I find myself falling victim to, like, the small kingdom, small camp language, which I think is, like, really bad. Like, we should be referring to them as, like, groups of four. Or, like, we need to come up with, with like, a word we should be using that is not small kingdom, small camp. Because I feel like that's inherently, unintentionally disrespectful. Like, the, the camps of four is how they should be referred to. And so I will apologize for referring to those camps as small kingdom, small camps. The groups of four is what they are. And like, oh my gosh. So the three groups of four will be allied, just to be clear. We are taking no ally. 1960 is taking no ally. 1093 is taking no ally. We tried to land on the fairest version possible. In my personal opinion, and let me just pull up the map real quick. There's really not a doubt in my mind that the best way this KVK could have possibly been played is for 2605 and 1960 to ally. And before a bunch of people say, oh, you just want to ally 1960. Bro, I don't, I literally, I'm not in Diplo. I don't care who we ally. I just want to show up and have a good time, okay? But if you actually deploy any amount of logic to this situation, here's why it is, in my opinion, pretty obvious that this makes the most sense. And don't take my word for it. Bro, it, it's not even my words. Nyko pointed out that you're basically trading risk um, plus map advantage versus known entities, okay? So if 2605 and 1960 were allied, we take this zone, we take this zone, we take this zone, jointly we take this zone. Meanwhile, you'd have the camps of four, Take, oh, blue is a terrible color for them. Let's make this yellow. Camps of four go here. They go here. They go here. They go here. They go here. Okay? Which creates this situation. All right? This is the best possible situation, given the map, what it is, um, for allies. And I feel like this is extremely logical because you're basically giving 1093 a um, map advantage and you're hoping that some of these kingdoms will really shine that are in the groups of four. And I think they almost certainly will. Some of them almost certainly will really step up in a way that's big. There's 12 of them. Like, some of them are really going to show up big for this KVK, right? And all of a sudden, you've got a heck of a KVK on your hands. And remember, if you just look at the 1v1 of 1093 versus 1960, by the numbers, by pure power, 1093 is favored by the domain power. If I remember correctly, they were like 65 billion power to like the 45, 50 billion power of 1960. I don't remember the exact numbers, so those could be wrong. But like the point I'm trying to make is that the weirdness of this setup and why this is so good for this particular configuration is that if 1093 theoretically were to be beating 1960 in a 1v1, then 2605 would have to beat all 12 camps and make up for however much slack we'd need to support 1960, right? Or if the opposite is true, and like 2605 struggles against the three camps of four, they would need to beat 1093 by enough to also offset the camps of four. This is, in my opinion, the most balanced configuration that could have been reached at. And the the situation we're in is by far the worst. Um, and, and the other way that we could have done this that I think could have made sense, but would not have been as balanced, in my opinion, is the 2v4 where we are allied with 1093. So in that situation, we take this zone, we take this zone, um, presumably we would take this zone, 1093 would go over here, and like the question then becomes, how much does 960 and their allies get? Um, and we already promised this camp safe passage, so they would be in here, and it would probably look something like this. Right. And so this is why I think the 2v4s were the like by far the most logical situations, uh, because you basically in either situation, 
like one kingdom has the advantage of having the three camps of four, which I think are going to be a way bigger factor than anybody's giving credit. Uh, I'm, we're talking about 12 kingdoms, man. In, in a map format where holding a pass requires only one, literally one to two meta garrison captains. I'm just saying this map format is really good for that. Um, anyways, it, and you, you basically have the uncertainty of how those other camps will perform with extra land to offset. That's the idea. And and you would have either way you slice the 2v4. Like it could be pretty cool. Now, this 2v4 situation I've not thought about as much. So like maybe this map would evolve a little bit differently. I'm not entirely sure. But um, my opinion is that um, free for all, aka always sucks always, was definitely the the worst the worst outcome. So like what happens now, man? What happens now? Well, I mean, where where do we go? I feel like, as Cortex said, we would be perfectly happy charging into 1960 and just, if we lose, we lose, but at least we got to fight. Um, so the worst thing for from our perspective is to end this KVK not having fought. So we would charge directly at 1960. Maybe I should draw us in red here, right? Um, let's try that again. Hello, red. Right, so we would charge directly at 1960 in this zone. Now, if 1960 actually wants to fight 1093, which they've said they want to do, um, then they would not fight us. They should give us this zone and they should just go here. Because if they fight us, they definitely lose to 1093. This is the point that we made earlier that 2v2v2 is really dumb because the top and the bottom fight and then 1093 is like, what the hell do we get to do? So if 1960 actually wants to fight 1093, they have to avoid fighting us, which means we also would just charge into this zone and we'd probably charge into this zone, which is kind of funny. Then 1960 would charge into here. And if they want to get their fight with 1093, right? Like 1093 would go here. 1093 would go here. 1093 would go here. Um, and then this is where the fight would go down between 1093 and 1960. And literally, if 1960 wants to take that fight, there is literally nothing that we could do to stop it. So 1960 could still play this KVK to get their fight with 1093. And if I was in 1960, I mean, look, like you could fight us in 2605 and like presumably they're going to win. But can you imagine if they lose? Like they should not fight us if for no other reason than the pure risk of the optics of the possibility of their losing. Even if you think it's a 5% chance that they lose, if they lose to us, the optics of that are a disaster for them. So they would be much better off from a pure optics standpoint just trying to avoid us and fight 1093. They're not sissies for avoiding us. They're just fighting 1093, right? But, it, but you know, people will, people will make their claims about it. But, like, the worst situation for 1960 is they fight us and they actually lose. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Don't get confused. But I'm saying if it did happen, that's a disaster for them. That is the worst way to go down in this KVK, hands down, is after all that diplo, after all that talk, after, you know, to then, if they lost to us, that would be a disaster. So, um, you know, we charge into these zones. And if they fight us, then they fight us and we get a good fight. And win or lose, we get what we came for, right? We Either way, we we get a fight, um, which is what, why we signed up for KVK. And there's all this weirdness about why didn't you queue up for first pop last time? We literally didn't have the Alliance credits to support queuing last pop. We wanted to. Um, and, and, you know, look, it's what it is. So here we are. This, this is going to be crazy. Subscribe if you haven't already. This this KVK is going to be nuts. If you think this drama was crazy, like just wait till we actually start doing things. It's going to be insane. <laughs> oh my God. I try to do the best I can to be objective. So if any information here is not 100% accurate or misrepresented in any way, I genuinely, genuinely, sincerely apologize. I spent literally hours trying to get to this point that we're at. Um, and I mean, look, uh, we, we're... We were along for the ride for whatever 1093 and 1960 could agree to. They couldn't find any agreement. 1960 went off and declared that the Diplo was done. So 1093 is like, uh, okay, we didn't actually agree, but all right, I guess we'll announce that. Um, and we're not taking any allies. So it became what it is. Then 1960 tried to say the Diplo wasn't done. And then anyways, I don't know, man. I can't summarize this. My brain's fried. I tried, man. 
I tried. That's why I included the, the actual words that people actually said. And the whole conversations were leaked anyways by 1960s leadership. So like, <laughs> what are we even talking about? Like, it's all out there. It's all out there. Dang, I got to go recover from all this drama, man. I don't like making drama vids. Like, I really don't. If you want to see more information about uh, this KVK and the announcement of the KVK, card in the end screen in just a second. Hope you'll enjoy and check out that live stream. Take care, everybody. Dang.